welcome to Scott's Amateur Wood Shop. Today I'm actually here in the old shop at my ex's house where I occasionally still have access um, and I can get some work done with some of the, uh, the other tools that I don't have in my apartment. Um, now see my other video last tour of the old shop, last tour of the old shop if you're interested in that. Um, what I'm here to show you today is a little bit of an introduction to staked furniture and specifically I hope I might inspire you to build your first three-legged stool. And I'm going to show you some of the things that you'll need to do and some of the optional steps. Uh, and as well as some of the necessary and optional tools. So let me walk you through from the beginning using some parts that I have. Um, this is a seat that I have that I started. Um, uh, there's some flesh from some fresh uh, plain strokes here that you can see on the otherwise uh, slightly aged wood. Um, and we'll make some more. Now this is a carved seat. You can see it kind of is in the shape of, well, a butt. Uh, but you don't need to carve a seat. You could cut a circle out of a piece of pine and and do it that way. That's, that's an optional thing, right? Um, now pine is a good wood. Something soft is good for the seat. Um, that's what's traditionally used. Uh, and something thick. So you could actually go get a 2x12 or a 2x10 um, from your local lumber yard and use that. Um, now if you do want to carve the seat, one good tool to have is an ads. I have one here made by Narex. It's probably not the best possible one you could get, but it, it has been good enough for me and I think it's one of the affordable ones. Um, it's essentially a very sharp scoop with a handle on it and you swing it like this. Now different ones have little different geometry. This one in particular likes to have kind of a little bit of a pulling motion as you're swinging it um, so that it cuts. Some others I know are a little more natural. You can just swing from the wrist. Um, and that allows you to do a lot of the, remove a lot of the wood from this seat. Um, you could also do a power carving technique. There are things called a turbo plane that you can put in an angle grinder. Um, that would be another way to go. And I would suggest um, marking out a few pencil lines, what you think you might want. Um, usually a ridge between the legs, maybe a line here near the back, um, and, and um, feel it out, sit on it, try it, go back again, try to do the same thing to each side. Um, now another tool that you might like, you've seen me recommend squirrel tail planes before on my channel. There is one on Lee Valley, it's a little under 50 bucks, that is double convex. It's convex this way, and it's convex this way. And this is really good at following some of these curves if you're making a, a curved seat. And it's a relatively affordable tool compared to some of the uh, fancy chair making tools you could find. And it'll follow these concave curves pretty nicely. Um, you do have to get used to using it so that if the curve of the plane and the curve of the seat don't match exactly where you're using it, um, you do want to hold it in such a way that the, um, the, the sharp part of the iron is in contact with the wood. I find it easy if I pinch it right here um, and I apply a little downward pressure, that helps, um, that helps make that easy. So you need a seat. Um, you don't need to carve it. Uh, you do need to drill three holes in it for a three-legged stool. Um, and you can eyeball the angle. Um, you, you want to end up with the feet of the legs, however long you're planning on making them, um, so that they are supporting under the stool and splayed out a little bit. Um, 15 degrees uh, away from the center is a good place to start. So if you have that rafter square I recommended, you could use that to guide your drill bit. Uh, now you will need a drill bit, uh, and you're gonna be drilling big holes. Um, the, the holes that I'm drilling, uh, I drilled, uh, well, the holes that I drilled in that one, I drilled with this 9 16 auger bit. And auger bits are a pleasure to use. They have some interesting geometry. You'll notice they have the lead screw that pulls the auger into the wood. They have spurs on the outside that score a circle. And then they have a leading edge right here that peels each layer of shaving off, in a, each layer of wood off in a circle. Um, so you can get. This one I got from Tools for Working Wood. It has a square shank for use in an old style brace and bit. You can also get some excellent ones from Wood Owl that have, uh, I believe, more like a hex shank for use on a uh, modern power drill. And there are also, um, I believe, Lee Valley sells a three jaw chuck uh, hand auger that would work with those. What I used is this two jaw chuck, old style um, auger 
It's one with a 14 inch sweep. I have one with a narrower sweep that might be a little more appropriate, but um, this gives you plenty of leverage and that other one is on loan to someone right now. Um, so you will need some way to drill holes and they're gonna be big holes. I would say five eighths might be a good place to start or three quarters. So it's probably gonna be an auger bit, uh, not, not a typical twist bit. Um, so you will need some way to do that. And a hand auger is really practical because you get lots of torque. Uh, even though you don't have lots of speed. And, and you don't really want a lot of speed for this. Um, now, a cylindrical hole is good enough. Um, what you do is you whittle the leg to have a matching cylindrical part and you do a little guessing and checking and maybe you wedge it in and that works absolutely fine. What's a little easier to do is if you get some of these optional tools, you get a matched set of a reamer, which I have here in a chuck. Um, and then you get the matching part. I don't remember what they call it. Um, I got this Veritas one on Lee Valley site, um, and it's basically a giant pencil sharpener. This one is in the 5 8 side, which means the dowel that emerges from this end is 5 8 and the other end is larger than that. I don't know how large. So what you do is you take your leg, you get it ready. Now, these I just split from a piece of oak. It's good to use a hardwood um, for the legs. Oak is great because it splits nicely. You could use maple, you could use apple, you could use whatever you could find. You can use a branch. It doesn't have to be uh, straight grain. It should have grain that is continuous from one end to the other. So if you use a curved branch, you're going to end up with a curved leg. But if you're okay with that, that's fine. Um, so this one, you would carve this leg down a little bit with a draw knife or an axe. Um, and then you would run it through here to refine it. And the shavings will come out as it sharpens this down into a conical shape. Um, and, and you might have to carve down this part to make sure it's narrow enough to fit into the pencil sharpener. After you try it for a minute, it may stop on its own and you'll go, oh, that's where it's too wide. Let me whittle that down a little bit with my knife or with my ax or whatever. Um, when you have those conical joints, that makes it easier to make these up. And another nice thing about using the reamer is that you can fine tune the angles. You can actually say, oh, is this going to support the stool? Oh, I need to make it a little bit out this way or a little bit in this way. And you can actually run the reamer to adjust the angle. Um, so those are optional tools. Um, once you've gotten to this point, I'll show you a couple more steps. Um, this is this is the point where you glue and wedge them together. Um, in this case, I'm going to uh, mark around the bottom here, and I'm going to mark around the top. Uh, I'm going to then cut off uh, the top, not cutting past my line. And I'm not interested in cutting exactly to the line right now. I'll chisel that flush later. Um, what I am interested in is getting it to be a nice flat surface that I can wedge into. Let me repoint the camera and you can see me do that saw cut. my vise, select a crosscut saw, and I'm just going to go above the pencil line and cut it straight across. Easy peasy. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a rip saw, and I'm going to use this panel saw because it has a wider curve. And I am going to cut this across the top so that the wedge, in the, and then I'm going to do this in the direction so that the wedge is going to try to spread this seat this way. Not this way because that would split it. So I'm going to think carefully about which way I'm cutting. And then I'm going to go for it and I'm going to not cut past that second pencil. Using my thumb as a guide to start the saw cut. That should be good enough. Now the wedges are optional, but I like them. I feel that they make it more secure. Um, you can see what this looks like. This is ready to accept a wedge. Uh, now we have to make a wedge, of course. Um, 
the way I like to do that is just take a small block of scrap. This is also from oak um, and set it on the bench. Um, I will take an ax or a pocket knife and some kind of a mallet that's not steel because I don't want to mushroom the back of my blade. In this case, I'll use this uh, wooden mallet that I made. Um, and I'm going to split this along the fibers. So I'm just going to hit it until it splits. And usually when you split, if you want things to go straight, you split in half. So I'm going to split this in half a couple of times until it's about the right size. Now, now I have a piece that's getting kind of thin. Um, so the next thing I will do is I will whittle this down into a wedge shape. Um, now I'm not going to show you all of this on video, I think it'll get a little bit boring, but there's a procedure to this where you put some glue on this, you hammer it into the seat until it's good and snug. Chris Schwartz likes to say that you hammer it until the next whack would split the seat. And uh, that's a pretty hard thing to gauge, but he's probably right. Um, and then you have a wedge ready to go. Now that pencil line I made, by the way, that shows me where to put this back the way I intended it to go. Um, and then you can pound the wedge in with glue on at least one side. Um, and tighten it. And then later you just carve this away or plane it away so that it's flush. Um, there's also a technique for leveling this, and I'd like to give you a hint of what that is. This stool right now is a couple of feet tall, but it's only going to be 16 inches tall when it's done. Um, so, by the way, if you watch my channel, you're going to hear Chris Schwartz's name a lot because I've learned a lot from him. Um, this is another technique I picked up from him that you can use to level any sort of chair or table or whatever, um, and certainly works on a three-legged stool. Um, what you do is you first level your workbench. So you use a level, um, and it's not a common tool in woodworking, actually. Usually you're using a square and a straight edge and things like that. Um, then, once you have a level workbench, you put the thing that you want to level up on top of it, like this stool is on top of my workbench, and you use wedges and whatever you need to to shim it too. And then all you need to do is mark lines a fixed distance up from your workbench. So 16 inches is really tall. Um, if it was just to get it level, you might use a matchbook or something. Um, so anyway, you take a block or a matchbook or a stack of blocks or whatever it is to get you to the right distance. And then you take your pencil. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use this large dry erase marker so that you can see the lines. These are not my real lines. You set it on its side and you mark all the way around. And then you've got lines that are at the right height. And then all you have to do is saw to a line. Sawing to a line should be a skill that you build anyway. Um, so then you've got a three legged stool and it's glued together and it's level. And um, Let's see, what did I miss? Oh, uh, well, I didn't show you a draw knife or a spoke shape. Yeah, so these legs I made by simply splitting and shaping. I, I, I didn't plane them to be octagons or anything. I like them to be just sort of an abstract, um, natural-ish shape. Um, one tool that's very helpful for that is an ax uh, on a stump, um, hewing it away. Um, you can make stopping cuts uh, going like this and then a hewing cut to, to take off all the chips. Um, another tool you can use is a draw knife. Um, this is a small one that I got from Lee Valley. Um, I buy a lot of tools from there, as I'm sure you can notice by now. Um, and you would uh, set this in a vise or in a shave horse or prop it up somehow against an object. And here I'll prop it against my tool chest just to show you how you could do this if you didn't have an ideal place and my belly. And then you simply draw the knife towards you, being careful not to cut yourself. But it's a relatively safe tool considering it's a big exposed sharp blade, partly because you've got handles on both ends. Um, another tool that's very useful if you want to do a lot of this kind of work is a spoke shave, which is a form of plane with a very short, wide sole. 
and that will allow you to take a rough shape and refine it very quickly. Um, you can just work your way around this, and it'll round off those surfaces. So uh, my intent with this video was not to show you absolutely everything you need to know to make a three-legged stool, but I hope that I've given you enough information that you could imagine yourself doing it and that you could maybe get started in your research um, and, and maybe try it out. Um, so, if you have any questions, if there's anything particularly burning in your mind, um, please post a comment um, and I will get back to you with uh, another video or point you to other resources. Um, there's a book called A Chairmaker's Notebook I mentioned before by Peter Galbert, which I would highly recommend it is excellent. Um, and it will teach you with pictures how to do a lot of this stuff really well. Um, and I hope you give it a try. I hope you do some experimentation. Um, with that, I'll remind you to use the buttons down below. And thank you very much for coming. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful time trying out something with wood in the near future. And with that, I'll say goodbye. Bye now.